Hi y'all, it's Tammy. Today we're cleaning shrimp, butterflying shrimp, frying up some shrimp. And it's going to be so good with the baked potato I made while I was at the grocery store. So y'all, pull up a chair and enjoy how to make good fried shrimp. It's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks, and I'm starving. I just got back from the grocery store, and I'm in a butterfly few shrimp. They had some on sale. They had one pack left, and that's that wonderful white lily self-rising flour. It makes a good biscuit, and it makes some good fried shrimp, and it makes good everything. And I'm going to show you how to clean them real easy, the butterfly them, and get them in a skillet and have them in no time. And boy, they're good. So you can buy them already. You know, I like the big ones. Now, if you want to use a smaller shrimp, you can, and you can pound it out. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. But if you'll just take a fork, a large dinner fork, and run up through the center of the shrimp, so it's right on the top of the shrimp. His, his uh, line goes right through there. So you just pull it up. Now, if you want to buy your shrimp already deveined, you can do that. But you do not need to buy it pre-cooked, okay? So make sure he's clean and you don't leave anything nasty in there, okay? So it's best to do this near the sink. Nope. Because I ain't no shrimp expert. You know? I, I couldn't go down to the pond in the pasture and catch me some shrimp. <laughs> I guarantee no shrimp it. Yep. Guarantee I didn't catch no shrimp in the pond. Yeah, here I can catch shrimp in a net. But we usually just buy it. Chris buys so much to fish with, it's crazy. We could eat shrimp every day. Mm -hmm. As much money as he spends on buying shrimp. All right, there it is with the tail on it. I'm not doing any more like that because it's a pain in the butt. Hmm. And then I got to worry about it. Okay. I don't even know if they can see this good because you're kind of not on the side you ought to be on. But All right, you see that right there? That's what the fork brings up. See it? Mm -hmm. So it works good. It works very good. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And I'm... I'm not an expert, like I said. But you know what? These are gonna be delish. You really shouldn't cut them so far down as I've been doing. Cut them about like that. Mm -hmm. All right, there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one more. Tell them about the first time you ate shrimp, what you did. I, that wasn't me. Who was it? I, I had a friend that um, they went for prom probably in high school. They lived in the mountains in North Georgia. And they probably went to Red Lobster or somewhere like that. And so they ordered shrimp and they got, um, what do you call them, the shrimp with the shells on? the um, Cocktail shrimp. Yeah, like cocktail shrimp or whatever. And so they ate them. And... They were like, well, they're okay. They're pretty good. They're a little fishy or whatever, you know. That and one's yellow for some reason. They went to school. It's just a different shrimp or different color. Okay. Uh, they went to school and asked one of their teachers in class. They said, Mr. Your coach so-and-so, have you ever had shrimp? And he was like, well, yeah. And they were like, did you like it? And he said, yeah, I liked it pretty good. And uh, they said, well, it's, it's, we like it, but it's crunchy, ain't it? 
And the teacher said, <laughs> said, what are you talking about? And I said, it's, it's real crunchy. He goes, no, shrimp's not crunchy. And, uh, and I said, well, yeah. He goes, well, what'd your shrimp look like? And they described it to him. And he's like, you're supposed to take the shells off of it and deshell it and all that. You just ate the shells and all. You're not supposed to do that. So I'm sure everybody in Red Lobster or wherever it was was checking those boys out. I'm sure they all got a good laugh out of Did their dates <laughs> eat it that way too? Probably. All right, this is soul food seasoning. It's got a kick and it's really, it's really salty. So you don't put salt, you just use it. It's from uh, Dollar General, Clover Valley. Then you're gonna put some pepper on them. And no, I don't put it in my flour. A lot of people wanna know why I don't season my flour. Well, when you're using flour to bread stuff, don't you throw a lot of it away? Yes, most of the time. And all those seasonings that you have to put in there extra to season that much flour, you're throwing away too. So I always season this. Um, we're gonna pour a little bit of buttermilk on it. Not a lot, just a little. Enough to wet it. It's hard to judge exactly how much flour to get unless you fried stuff a whole lot and you're always gonna have a little bit left over. That's the way it is. Some of y'all might have been doing it so long you feed the same amount of people, but you know, even no matter who we are, uh, our lifestyles change, you know. You know, we're young and we're just feeding ourselves. We get married and then we get a couple of kids and we're feeding us and the kids and then our kids leave the house and then it's just us sometimes and the spouse and then sometimes we have to take care of our parents. I mean, sometimes we're by ourselves. I mean, so lifestyles change and all you gotta do is reduce your cooking by really whoever's eating. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna throw a little oil in the skillet. Now, like I said, if you've got small shrimp, all you have to do is put your shrimp in a Ziploc bag and pound it, and it'll get flat and really wide and big if you wanna impress somebody uh, with a smaller shrimp. Now we're just gonna use some self-rising flour. I put a little bit of oil, cooking oil in the skillet to get it hot. And we're gonna turn it up on high. And now all we're going to do is put plenty of flour on these. Self-rising flour will make them nice and crunchy. That's all you need. Make sure you put your soul food seasoning on there. It's got a kick to it, but it's not enough that they're going to be hot and spicy. It's just enough to give them some flavor. But don't go real heavy-handed with it or it'll be too salty and too hot. Just slightly sprinkle it like I did. Um, when, every time I do this, I think of Chef Carmen in Atlanta. Chef Carmen is, uh, has a channel. I know a lot of y'all watch her. Um, and she does shrimp and fries most everything with self-rising flour like I do. And she's a chef. <laughs> so she's not just a home cook that does it. She's a chef that does it too. All right. So you can test your oil. It's ready. We're gonna we're gonna lay these in here, and then um, how y'all like our new light? We got it at the Bass Pro Shop yesterday. It's supposed to go on a boat to shine on fish. What do you think? Looks good, don't it? Yeah. I guess I can see it good. Yes, yeah, showing the pan. I hope it's not like, you know, how sometimes the light will not do as well. No, it looks good. All right, that's not going to take but like a minute. All right, so I'll let you tell your story while you're showing them the shrimp. And a while ago she asked why that shrimp was different color. There are like, there's white shrimp and brown shrimp. There are shrimp that are different color. Okay. Uh, but anyway, while we're watching this shrimp fry, it doesn't take very long. Uh, the first time I got on a treadmill, we were at a hotel, and um, I got out and went down to the workout room. This is when I was in good. Sh I was in really good shape because I was still young. And I got on the treadmill, and I tried to figure out how to turn it on. 
and it wouldn't turn on. I was like, well, this thing, how does it work? I guess you just, and so I started kind of running on it a little bit, and it did move, and um, so I just, okay, I'll just work out on it like this, and it was really difficult, and I couldn't hardly run. I just about had to walk and hang on to the rails and push it and all that, and so I stayed on it about 20 or 30 minutes, <laughs> which is a lot less than what I usually uh, did. And uh, there was a, there was a lady that came in there and was, she was working out, and she just kept looking at me, and I thought, well, she must think I'm good looking or something. And I got down to the uh, I got off the treadmill, and I was over there wiping my face and all that kind of stuff. And then she went over there and turned it on and pushed the buttons and everything how it was supposed to turn on and started running on it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it runs. <laughs> he didn't even know it was electronic. No he got idea. on the treadmill. <laughs> And worked out on the treadmill yeah. without. It was quite a workout too. Why is my timer not going off? Because uh, I didn't hit the stop button. Yeah. All right, here we go. Say they really Flipping it. No time at all. Now see, we didn't have to double dip it. We didn't have to, you know, uh, dip it and then dip it in the flour and then turn around and dip it again. And that's that wonderful. White lily self-rising flour. It makes a good biscuit and it makes some good fried shrimp and it makes good everything. Alright, timer on. But anyway, I think the lady was pretty impressed that I could do that for 20 or 30 minutes. Because that she did probably was. that did take a lot of power. And strength. And endurance. <laughs> I have a heart attack. I'll try to do that now. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to do it. So, I got me a watermelon. I was going to show y'all. Uh, well, Chris, I know they probably want to see the fried shrimp, honey bunny, and you. But unless I'm really showing them something. Well, here. I got 24 seconds to fried shrimp left. So let them see it. To look at. Because I'm not doing anything interesting right now. That's what you think. Yeah. That's what I think. Now, if y'all were here, we'd give you a bite of shrimp. And a lot of y'all probably thinking, Lord, I could eat that much shrimp by myself. Well, so could we. But we are trying to do better, aren't we, Christopher? Yep. Tell them how much weight you've lost so far. Um, I went from 226 to 212.5 this morning. That's pretty doggone good, y'all. Mm -hmm. And nothing gripes my tail more than to go to a restaurant and get shrimp and uh, it and it be overcooked. So don't overcook it, okay? It should only take about a minute on both on each side at the most. And I've already ate lunch. I had a potato. I didn't know she was going to come back from the grocery store with shrimp, so I only get a couple of them, one or two of them. Okay, and you can show them this. This is a recipe in our third cookbook. Right there it is. And I was going to show y'all a couple of things, and that is, I got some good salad stuff. I got me some collard greens, uh, onions. I didn't get the bedellas because they're too soft and they won't last long. I got a couple of ears of corn, some onion. Um, so uh, I've been reading, and it says if you'll get a cheddar instead of a different kind of cheese, it will take less of it to make something taste cheesy. So that's what I got. Oh, and I got us, um, I bought our ground beef this way so I could pick it up in quarter pound servings and cook it. And then I also got us a watermelon. Woo! And see how nice and yellow the bottom is? That means it's gonna be good and ripe. And then, what else? Is that it? Pretty much. Oh, I got some good bread. Oh, and I got popcorn. So that we can pop popcorn for a snack. We used to eat popcorn like this all the time. And I got popcorn stuff. Alright, let's give this a taste. Get a 
close up. Ain't it pretty, y'all? Mm -hmm. Looks good. It's gonna be good with my with my baked potato. Clap. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it looks like. You're not gonna believe this. What? You know how I am. You know how good I am at tasting things? Uh-huh. I can taste anything. I got a really good palate. This shrimp was pre-frozen. Mm-hmm. We live right here on the coast. Yep. And we got pre-frozen shrimp. You can taste it. It tastes similar to the freezer. Mm -hmm. Now, some of y'all can't tell the difference, but I sure can. So it's not fresh shrimp. We'd have to go get it from somebody else. We'd probably be better off making the shrimp that you fish with, because they're live, aren't they? Yes, but you're not supposed to do that. That gets Why? those guys are not selling food grade shrimp. Oh. They're not supposed to oh. I mean, you're not supposed to eat that. Okay. But I'm sure there are probably people that do. But I would not condone. But we're not that. doing it. Nope. But you can go catch your own shrimp, and this is this time of year where I mean, you it's can, delicious. where you can do it, and you can catch them with nets out of the river, and eat them. This recipe is perfect. It's the right amount of salt without being too salty. It's crunchy. It's perfectly fried. It's not overcooked. It's not under. I mean, it's really good, y'all. Good stuff. So most people would think it was delicious, but I'm pretty picky about my shrimp. Yeah, it's hard to find a place where they actually serve fresh shrimp year-round. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter where you are. Right. Uh, you know. You can be on the coast. A lot of people think just because they take a vacation on the coast that they go in restaurants. Me and Chris used to have a place in Pensacola. We were there all the time. And I'm not kidding. I don't think we ever found a restaurant no. that served fresh shrimp. Or fish, hardly. But that... Every once in a while, you'd find one that had some fresh fish. But now, there is a restaurant in Darien that serves fresh shrimp. Yeah. What's the name of it? B&J's? B&J's. And then some of these down Ooh, here, good. I think, sometimes will have it. I don't think they always have it, but right. I think sometimes they do. Yeah, I've had yeah. fresh shrimp here before. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, I'm going to cut my watermelon. I'm going to have me some of my baked potato. And we will catch you next time on Color Valley Cooks. Y'all fry up some pretty shrimp for your sweetheart. They'll love it. Bye, y'all. Love ya. Thanks for watching.